good afternoon. Welcome back. Um, now the next thing to do on the Harley Sportster. Uh, so far, all we've done on this is open out the voice, got the pipes sounding fantastic. The next thing I want to do is the next most obvious thing for me, for my style and taste, is to change the bars. Now, this comes, this is an 883R or 883 Roadster, and it comes with these classic Street Tracker style bars. These have been around for, ah, oh, since the 1950s, I think, on Sportsters. Ever since the Sportster came out in 57, this has been a very classic style that they've had. Personally, they're not my favourite. I think they're a little bit wide. I think these are a little bit flat here. You tend to be a little bit elbows out, but your seat isn't high enough to have that above it motocross position. So they're a little bit of a not one and not the other either. Personally, they look cool. They look cool standing still, but for me, they're not the nicest to ride with. I think the hands are too flat. So what I've got hold of is some of these. These are Built World Chumps. Um, if you remember, we did a... It's a great name there, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> we did a video a little while ago, Built Well Keystone Bars. Just look it up. It's about three, two, three years ago. And I put the Built Well Keystone Bars on the iron that I had at the time. They're really, really good quality. They're very heavy, extremely well made. They come with the dimples for Harleys. You can buy them from Built Well's own website. So you can just Google them if you're interested. Built Well Chumps. They come in silver or black. And obviously black's the right colour for this bike. And I'm going to give them a try. Just put them up in position. You'll see the difference. They are a little mini ape, basically, a little mini ape hanger. They run, you, you lean them very slightly forward than the slant of the forks to give the right look. And that puts the hands in just a bit more of a relaxed position than this, which is a bit flat and straight, a bit elbow out. And they're a little bit narrower, not quite so wide and intense. I think they're going to be great. So we're going to give them a try. Now I've got these from my buddy Carlos. He's got that 48. We did the tank swap on a little while ago. Uh, we had a backrest on this when we got it. Didn't need that, not going to use the backrest. Uh, so rather than do anything other or sell it, whatever, just good old fashioned barter and exchange. He's got that because he's got a little boy and he wants to take him on the back of his Harley. And I needed a pair of bars. He had these and I rather like them. So we did a deal, just straight swap. Best way to do it, isn't it? Sure is. Right, let's get him stuck on the bike. What do you reckon? Yep. Let's go for it. Right, first thing with anything on handlebars, anytime you're doing anything on bars, is protected tank. Just get an old towel or something like that. Pop it over the top and it stops any tools. You're going to be manipulating tools in this area, scratching the tanks. Always take care of that. Right, first job, first thing to do, take the mirrors off. We're going to put them under slow, I believe, on this one. So just unbolt them from underneath. Of all the, of all the mirrors fitted to any bike ever I've ever seen, Harley, Harley Davidson mirrors are the simplest method of connection of a motorcycle mirror that is possible. They just bolt through the casting and out the other side with a nut on the bottom, ever so easy. Just take the nut off and just lift them clear. There we are, simple as that. Easy. And when you want, <laughs> easy peasy, when you want to mount them underneath, you just come in from underneath, push them up, put the nut on top instead. Easy. Ain't hard, is it? No. Right, it's that one out. Let's get the other one off. There we are. Pop the nuts back on the bottom. If you're doing any job on your bike, just workshop practice. Those of you novice mechanicers who are doing this sort of thing for the first time on a bike, just these sort of practices really help. You take a fastener off, put it back in the hole it comes from. Easiest place to find it later on. There's nothing worse than looking for fasteners when you need them later. <laughs> and they're gone. <laughs> they disappeared into another dimension. Right, now, actually I'll show you this. Before we go any further, if you're going to do Anything on your sports star, anything on any Harley Davidson, you will need a set of these. These are Torx bits. Um, Torx, TX, call it what you like. I use Clark Pro. I'm not showing these, I went and bought these. We don't get given this sort of stuff to promote. It doesn't work that way. I wish it did. Um, and all these are is just a simple set of these little Torx bits. And a close look will show they're like a star, like a little flower on the end. They're not an Allen key. So for the, if you're doing it again, if you're doing this for the first time, I spoke to a guy in a Harley dealer, we went out to meet Mr. Dyson this morning for breakfast at the Harley dealership, and we met a, a guy over there, and he was telling us that he just bought himself uh, an iron, and he'd never worked on a bike, he'd been off bikes for 20 years, but he'd been watching the videos and learning lots of stuff. So obviously we are responsible for some of you getting involved in it for the first time ever. So this is just a garage advice, get yourself some Torx bits, because, have a look man, all these fasteners here, all of these that Harley put in, they're not Allen bolts, these are Torx bolts, and they need these little star drive heads. They're not expensive, and they fit in beautifully. And they, are, they may look as if they're a little bit weak, but they're not. So the first job is to take these off. Just take the furniture off the bars before we do anything else. There we go, there we are. There we are. So 
So I take the bolts out, drop the cap off, cap being this part, that's the cap. And you'll see Harley cleverly put these little tiny captive washers. I don't know what you call them. One of you knowers out there will tell me. These little washers, and they stop the bolts falling out. They're quite handy. So just, there you go, clever, clever Harley. Right, now that, if you come in here, you'll see, do you come around then? Mm -hmm. um, this is something that does confuse people quite a lot. You can see that taking that cap off, this still doesn't come out yet because the back half of this casting is captured within the switch block. So it doesn't come out yet at all, so don't force anything. There we go, let's get the other clip. Change to the right size. When you use these, you'll get a small one fits in and you think, yeah, yeah, that's fine. But if you fit one of these into the hole that you're going to turn against and there's any play, if there's any lash in it at all, don't use it. Put a bigger one in because it's quite deceptive sometimes. That looks a lot bigger than it will go in there. I'm just going to loosen and that, that switch right block and does and that can remove. Okay, so just loosen it off. It only needs literally that much, whatever that is, about three mil. That's all it needs. Just loosen loosen this switch gear this time because the switch gear on this side contains the throttle assembly which I'm not going to undo. Now you can if you really want to undo this there's two little clips you unhook the hammers the two little blocks on the end of the wire unhook them lead them around pull them out take that off honestly there's no need is that a much easier way to do it just get that moving so it's all adrift back off this is the throttle lock. Harley's come with this little throttle lock shoe. Back that off so there's loads of room. It's nice and free. And when that's all nice and free like that, you don't need to do anything else. Next, we actually attack the bar clamps themselves. Before we do that, take these, that these bar grips are so, they're so solid that sometimes you can put an airline down inside there and blow, but it just doesn't seem to go anywhere. So all I do with this, WD-40 tube, simplest way, the quickest and most reliable way to get bars off, especially if they're a bit glued on. Sometimes they might be, I'm not sure, I can feel a little cracking going on, so it might be that they're glued on. Pop the tube in as far as it will go, and just give it a squirt of WD-40 inside there. And that will soon start to move it around. Now obviously what that will do... It's a good dance you got there. Do you like that? <laughs> See like it's moving everywhere now but it is glued because you can feel it cracking as it's breaking the glue. Normally in the dealer I would imagine they just razor blade them off and put a new one on. But that's because they're spending your money and it doesn't matter to them. Mm, sure do. There we go, we're off. That's it. Broken the glue, right. That's got hard glue on that. You can see it there. And it feels like super glue. You feel inside there, little hard, scratchy bits. So because that's got WD-40 now inside the rubber, all we're gonna do in a minute is use hot soapy water. You pour it in, shake it up, and that kills all the WD-40 grease. And that'll go on the nice new bar. I'll show you that at the end. So that's that off. Right, let's get the bars off. This is the main time you need that towel just to protect the paintwork. Alright, there's a little P-clip just in there that holds holds the brake hose in place. I'm just going to release that because the brake hose itself I'm going to have to manipulate that around a little bit. You get this metal pipe, but it's okay just to bend that around a little bit. I won't do it any harm, they're quite robust. I'm just very gently leaving that hanging there without too much. It's hanging on the throttle cables for now. Actually, I'll tell you what I'll do. Just for safety, because I know I will get trolled for it, I'm going to hang 
There we are. There we are. I get so many bollockings for things like that. Right, that's so the brake hose, which has got a metal pipe, has got some support from above. There we go. Just going to pop the clocks, lay them forward out of the way. And then, there we are. Now, this is the good, this is, this is where it becomes beneficial, just to loosen that off. You just slide the bar out a bit. You don't need to actually un undo all that and unsettle all the cables. They stay neatly in there. Just rest it away. Right. Let's grab hold of that for a minute. That's the, um, the clamp, which is just stuck to the top of the bars. There we go. Pop that off. That's what we need. Right. Now, all I need to do is, it's just a little test install, and the first job is reach down, is the, well the first job is the last job we just did, reach down and install that straight on the end, so we haven't got to reach it off, because these aren't long enough to reach off the end and slide on, so we put the bar in first, all right, get them roughly lined up, where you've got the two knurled sections, just eyeball it until it looks right. It's about as close as it'll get. Right. I've just pre-prepared these with some anti-seize on the ends. That way they slide in nicely like that with your fingers. You get a nice correct torque setting. All torque settings are on a lubricated thread. Otherwise it's not going to give you the correct figures or the correct value on the torque wrench. It'll click early due to metal drag. Right, you're going to have to release, if you're going to fit these on yours, it's things like the cables and that. Right, I've released the whole clutch cable there completely, and then I'll, because it does need to go a little higher, and a bit more of an angle that way, so that if you release it all, then you can clip it back. If you need a longer one, you can buy a longer one, because uh, things like clutch cables, throttle cables, all of that from Harley Davidson, they're very easy to get hold of, they're on the shelf, right. Back on. Okay, you get a dimple underneath the bars, wiring goes in the dimple. Now you put your bar on. Now, all I've done is clean that out hot, uh, hot soapy water or some washing up liquid inside, give it a shake, clean it, airline inside, dry it out, and bone dry. Just rotate it on. Little rotated circles, and it'll go into place. And with all the Harley grips, they go up inside the switch gear. So you see a little lip there that goes up inside the switch gear. So you don't actually need to glue it on. It's completely unnecessary. It will go on sans glue. Do you like that? Mm. Clever, isn't it? Very exotic. All right, time for this. This is quite important. Um, I've taken off the little clip, the P clip, that holds that there to the top yoke or top tree. Just released this. And you've got a hard brake pipe there. And that bends underneath to a three-piece splitter or single welded splitter. Now there's nothing I can do other than to bend this because it is one piece. But this is Bundy tubing. It's quite soft. Uh, I believe it's brass and it doesn't snap unless you really want it to. It's quite easy to bend. And all I've got to do is this 90 degree bend here. If I show you the top, look, I'm almost on there. And all I've done is release this clip to get there. But I want to be able to have that just a little bit more slack than it's got, just a little bit more. So while it's there, what I'm going to do is take out these two bends here by coming gently that way with that one and gently back with the other one. There we are. So that's straightened out that kind of 290 degree bends there. The least amount of manipulation you can give a brake pipe the better doesn't do it you know you can't bend it back and forth all day it will be detrimental at some point virtually bang on so all I'm going to do with this one is it's welded in underneath can you see that then probably can't see it it's welded in under there these are all, that's all one solid piece I can't do anything to release that so all I'm going to do is come out a little bit bend it out a little bit straighten it slightly and then lift it up It's quite soft and quite forgiving within reason. 
and there it is. Perfect. There we are. You literally only have to manipulate that about an inch. That's all it takes. Any more than that, buy yourself a complete new set of brake pipes. That's not difficult to do. Your Harley dealer will sell them for you. Right, your indicators on these, or traffic eaters, whatever, they sit on a little swinging ball joint. So just face them forward, unless you're going to relocate them elsewhere, but they're okay. There for now. So that's it. Okay, it's important to take a swing over the bike. Get a feel for where everything is, everything's sitting neatly, and that you can reach everything, the levers are all comfortable. Final thing is to turn it lock to lock and make sure everything's moving and nothing's chafing, but we'll do that in a sec because you feel straight away there's a clutch adjustment problem. If you do this yourself, what we've done here is this clutch cable is, it's just a little bit sh more curved than it was before. So what's happened because of that, it's taken out the free play at the top of the clutch and here in that section there there should be a three millimeter gap of just slack just free play and there's nothing that's pulling hard against there so I need to slacken off the cable a bit we do it down here very simple you get a bottle adjuster in the middle pull the gator out of the way half inch nine sixteenth and just undo undo the bottle screw just lock it off Back that off. This has been covered in red grease, so it's been cared about. That's what we've done during the service. And that, that cable adjuster there, as you screw that, it's got a um, standard screw thread adjuster in it. And as you do that, you just back it off, bring that together, bring that bottle screw together, which shortens the outer cable, and that effectively opposite lengthens the inner, and it'll give you that slack. And there we are. See it? And that just ensures, there we are, you've got that bit of slack, two or three mil, doesn't need any more than that. And that two or three mil ensures that the clutch plates are completely compressing and everything's releasing fully and it's not being held by the cable. Really important when you change bars because that can often be a result of manipulating the clutch plate uh, cable into a different position. And when you're done with it, bring the jam nut or lock nut back down onto it to hold it in place because it's very important that you're riding along it doesn't adjust itself, just jam it up, little knock nut last there, that's all it takes, done, and then bring that back down. It doesn't hurt now and again, just when that's in place, part of your routine when you're cleaning, get your WD-40 tube down in top, give a squirt down in there till it runs out the bottom, then wipe off the excess, and keeping that all oily and greasy in there means that you can adjust that whenever you need to adjust it. And you could find, even on a hot day, you could find your clutch cable stretching, a couple of spanners, you can adjust that. It. That's better, right? And then these two little clips just come in here to hold that all in place. It's quite nice, isn't it? Hmm. Great. Yeah, it's cool. All right, check all the wiring, anything you've pulled touched or moved, check nothing snags or tugs on anything, and that's got loads of free play, even at full right lock, still got the lever play it needs. Cool, job done. To everyone's taste I'm sure I'll get a few dislikes on this one built well chumps and they're an 8 inch ape hanger with a nice little slant to them so you have them just a little bit further forward than the slant of the forks which I always feel looks that little bit more aggressive a bit nicer aesthetically and it puts your hands in the right place for me I love them absolutely fine arms a little bit further in which means a bit further forward with monkey arms like mine it's ideal and it doesn't matter does it Pim half an hour you can swap them back yeah this is a great thing with bars you can buy any number of different bars from the internet uh, and obviously from Harley as well. Um, is it you say? 
Other manufacturers also have bars. <laughs> and you can just change them in half an hour. It's not difficult. Once you've done it once, it really is easy the second time. You get like a habit over it. Always protect your paintwork and always take the care to make sure that everything that you've undone is done up afterwards. Use your marker paint if you want to. Get your manual, your big blue thick Harley Davidson manual. Get the torque settings. Torque everything up to the correct values that it should be. Anti-seize on everything that should have it. Things like these bolts here. You saw the white cack on those that stops them doing that properly. And take it for a test ride before you go anywhere further than the end of your street. Just run it around, make sure everything's working, make sure nothing's shorting out or crosses over. It is, it's not major surgery, it's only swapping handlebars, but it is quite invasive. All the controls which control the motorcycle have been disturbed, so make sure when you put them back, they're all in the right place in the right order and working as they should do. What do you reckon, pens, you like them? Yeah, cool. Eight inch shape hangers. Any bigger, I think they'd be too much for a sportster. Um, the Dyna ones are sort of 12 inch, they'd be a bit too high, but I quite like them. So there we are, built world chumps, fitted, job done. Take easy bite safe, see you next time. Through the fumes and haulage, it's sometimes hard to know if the prize is stateside of Nuevo Laredo. Beginning and an end And when the face you trust most Is no longer the one on which you can depend When the fight feels futile And life's injustice wins Where's my sunlight when 